welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer. It's brought to you by the World Puja Network. And my name is Dr. Stephen Greer. I'm the director of the Orion Project and the Disclosure Project. And I have with me today uh, Dr. Ted Loader, who's Professor Emeritus at the University of New Hampshire and is uh, joining me today to have discussions about uh, the exciting breakthrough that has just occurred in the last few days with our being notified that we have won the bid for the Stan Meyer equipment and all of the documentation dealing with Stan Meyer's water to fuel system. So welcome, Ted. I'm glad you came. Hey, uh, th- thank you very much, Steve. It's a pleasure speaking with you again about this topic. It's been uh, something we've worked on for a long time now and I've been trying to uh, I get involved with for a number of years now, so uh, things are very exciting. They're coming to a head, as you said. Well, to give some background for people, I'd like to explain that uh, uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time on the World Fusion Network, um, uh, that we uh, have been studying this particular type of technology for a number of years. Uh, Stan Meyer was a very famous inventor who died suddenly in 1996 under mysterious circumstances, but up until that time uh, he had actually uh, had some local media coverage and quite a bit of coverage around the world on his uh, building of a system that using uh, a high frequency, uh, high voltage electronics was able to cause water, just plain old tap water, to dissociate into hydrogen and oxygen and then run an engine on it. And he actually had a dune buggy kind of modified car running just on water and also had other equipment running on uh, just water. And as, of course, the most abundant substance in the universe, hydrogen, uh, and also the most abundant uh, uh, thing on the Earth is water, if you count all the oceans. Uh, This was something that was uh, viewed as a very significant breakthrough in energy generation, not only because of its abundance, but because it was relatively cheap or free, and that the emissions, when you burn this, gas, which is called in some circles Brown's gas, which is the hydrogen and oxygen gas that makes H2O or water, all you have is water vapor in the tailpipe or the emissions. So there's no uh, global greenhouse gases. There's no noxious pollutants like when you burn gasoline, uh, oil, or propane, or what have you. And so this was viewed as a very big step forward. Um, As I mentioned, he uh, died tragically and suddenly in 1996. And uh, we had uh, been looking into this, but uh, it turns out that his patents did not have the complete information to reproduce the system. And so we were really in search of uh, people who knew that. Uh, uh, We then were contacted by some people who uh, had inherited uh, all of Stan Meyer's original notebooks and equipment and this dune buggy who were still uh, in possession of these things and didn't know quite what to do with them. And so uh, Dr. Loader went and visited uh, these folks uh, back in January of this year and actually saw all this equipment just basically in storage and and piled up and the dune buggy still there uh, and, you know, boxes filled of materials. And uh, we have since then been trying to acquire uh, these materials so that we could set up a research and development project around them to, uh, as it were, resurrect this technology, which has... uh, uh, been fallen into obscurity uh, over the last 12 years. And so, uh, as you all may have heard on previous World Puja Network interviews, uh, this was something where there were a number of other groups competing for this, and uh, they have now decided, uh, the, the people who have inherited all of this equipment have decided to go with the Orion Project, which is a very, very big announcement we're making today for the first time publicly on the World Puja Network. Um, we are going to have to provide these folks with $120,000 for the equipment and materials, and then, of course, we're going to have to set up a facility here near the University of Virginia in Charlottesville uh, to have a team of scientists study it and figure out exactly how it all works. But uh, it's an exciting breakthrough because just to give an overview of what the potential of this technology is, uh, Imagine that every home in America uh, uses, on average, 400 gallons of water a day, and most of that is from uh, wastewater that's from showers and sinks and what have you, as opposed to sewage. 
that could be uh, filtered, run into a tank, and then you could use that water instead of it just going into wastewater uh, to run a generator that would run your house. Or if your car had been modified to run on this, you could have water in your gas tank instead of uh, gasoline. So in terms of converting all the uh, one billion internal combustion engine motors that are on the road today in cars and all the generators that are out there uh, and trying to, to just get a little more efficiency out of them, they could all be converted so that they would run on just water. And, of course, as I mentioned, the only emission would be uh, this water vapor, which could be condensed uh, and could be put back into the system. So uh, basically this has enormous promise. And uh, we have also, uh, you might want to mention, uh, 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 Ted, the, 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 the letter we got from an aerospace Ph.D., who had worked with a British team and, and what that British team had found uh, when well, they had investigated this while Stan was still living. This is, yes, uh, you know, I think a um, good point. Uh, we received just recently a letter from uh, uh, some uh, British scientists who had said that, yes, they had come to inspect uh, Stan Meyer's uh, materials and the technology back in the early 90s and uh, found that uh, that indeed it was doing what uh, he claimed it was doing and they were very excited and, and so we have been able to uh, through a series of emails and correspondences ultimately uh, uh, obtain the contact information for this person who actually inspected it back then and we've been waiting uh, frankly for this moment when we've obtained the technology ourselves or in the process of obtaining it in order to uh, be able to contact that person and I, and I might mention, uh, while we're talking about that type of thing, I might mention it at this point, is that uh, because we've talked about uh, the, the Meyer uh, technology on our, the Orion Project, uh, the orionproject.org website over the past uh, few months, we've had people contact us, uh, various people from around the world, who either had met uh, Stan Meyer or had worked with people who had worked with him, and are offering us information. And an interesting thing just happened literally this week is that uh, a few weeks ago uh, we had a contact from somebody in Australia who we spoke with uh, who had met with Stan Meyer and had some information for us that Stan had told him off the record on some of how his technology worked. And he said, oh, well, you need to talk to this person in the United States, uh, whom he had met, and so I contacted the person in the United States who said, oh, yes, he had uh, spent many, uh, many days, uh, many trips to visit the Stan's uh, laboratories in Ohio, and he said he had all kinds of paperwork and materials from Stan that he would be glad to send us. And so literally I just received this information uh, a few days ago. So uh, I'm going to put out a plea right now at this point in our conversation that uh, many of you listening to the World Pusion Network uh, might know of or know somebody who actually had contact with or had worked on some of Stan's technology over the last several decades. And if uh, now knowing that uh, the Orion Project uh, is uh, will be getting access to these materials, any information we can get or people who work with us who might want to work with us or provide information, if they would uh, contact us, that would be just wonderful through the Orion Project. Uh, dot org. We really, the Orion Project. We really need that word. sort of help from people who had actually worked with Stan directly. Exactly. Um, who have knowledge of, uh, and the reason for this is that we know that the patent information where he puts in the actual uh, voltage and hertz uh, of the of the electronics that he had not put in all the information of how those systems work because he wanted to keep it secret, which was unfortunate. Uh, and what that means is that people who try to recreate the effect of what he had just from the patents have not been able to do so. Uh, now, what we're going to have, luckily, are, uh, is all this equipment as, that, that was his original equipment, although we do not know the, the state of it at this point. I mean, we know that it's there, and we know that it's, uh, uh, but it's not operational. It hasn't been run for 12 years. Uh, and we'll also receive a lot of the papers and documents that Stan Meyer had that uh, the, 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 the group, the, the family, actually, that inherited all of this have kept for the last 12 years. But this is going to be a very big research project, and we really want to have people who have firsthand knowledge of this come to us. So they should go to the orionproject.org, our website, www.theorionproject.org, 
and send us a note about what they know. We also need the listeners to uh, contribute very generously uh, this week uh, for uh, the expenses that we're going to have related to this, and it's because we only have to have $120,000 to provide uh, uh, this group who has all this equipment and information but we also have to somehow set up a laboratory here, and we have to equip it with proper, um, very high-quality electronics um, to do the analysis of all these circuits and coils and what have you, and we have to have personnel to run it, um, really well-qualified electronics uh, engineers and, and scientists who can study this. So this is going to require um, several hundred thousand dollars in uh, funding and which we do not have yet. Now we, so this is why it's really important for people listening to this that they network this announcement uh, and this particular show on the World Puja Network to their entire list of contacts and friends, and let them know that uh, this uh, major uh, breakthrough in energy research that Stan Meyer had done is now going to be uh, in the possession of the Orion Project. Uh, uh, we are pretty. Uh, shooting for within the next um, uh, 30 days, and that we're going to need to have a facility and personnel to study this, and we need the support of the public and the funders out there to do that. So please uh, go on our website and contact us and make a generous um, donation so that we can do this research, so that we can uh, get this technology functional again and out to the world uh, in, in the best way uh, possible because it has so much potential. I want to go back for a minute, though, to this um, British team. Uh, what, what Ted didn't mention is that this was actually a British government team headed up by an admiral right. um, that uh, was sent to Stan Meyer's laboratories in Ohio, and there was a senior British scientist on that team whose information we now have and who was personal friends with a disclosure project witness and uh, a gentleman who was a Ph.D., aerospace engineering uh, scientist at a university in Ohio. And uh, he was able to confirm that the uh, dune buggy, for example, there have been a lot of rumors that, well, you know, it had a lot of uh, batteries stuck into the frame or it was this or it's that. They were actually given access to it to take it apart, look at it, and see that, in fact, it was running just on his uh, water system and that there were no hidden sources of power, and uh, that subsequently uh, they were able to confirm that the technology was doing exactly what Stan Meyer claimed it was doing. And this from a very senior scientific team sent at the request of the British government uh, to look into this just prior to Stan Meyer's death. So I think that uh, you know this is, there's mounting evidence that this is a really significant technological breakthrough that needs to be taken very seriously because we're in a phase now where the president-elect Obama is talking about spending $150 billion on energy research and a new energy economy. And unfortunately, the dialogue right now is about biofuels, which are actually taking two steps uh, backwards for every step forward in terms of the environment, and other more conventional alternative energy sources like wind and solar. And there's nothing going into this kind of research that's uh, been very well documented over the years, but which, of course, has been often classified or suppressed because it would completely replace the need for oil and gas and coal and nuclear power. But I think that what the public who understand the implications of this uh, should do is uh, support the orionproject.org and go to our website, read about the Stan Meyer. We have a lot of information there about the Stan Meyer system. Uh, and uh, for months we have been negotiating to get this equipment and all the notebooks and uh, intellectual property and uh, records of Stan Meyer. And now we have been notified uh, in the last week that, in fact, we have been awarded that contract. And we're in the final stages of doing the paperwork on that. So this is a very big breaking story, and we really need the support of everyone listening, and they need to net network this to everyone and their uh, friends uh, and colleagues and coworkers who are concerned about the environment and energy because uh, we think that this has enormous potential, but it's going to be a very detailed and, I think, um, 
uh, arduous task to organize all this equipment that's been in storage for 12 years, get it running again in a laboratory that's properly equipped, uh, not only for safety but for technical uh, ability to analyze what's happening in these complex circuits. Uh, by the way, uh, the, it has been reported to us that the way that Stan Meyer first came across the idea of doing this is that he worked uh, years ago at a radar factory, a place that made uh, radar systems, and he observed that at certain frequencies and at certain voltages that were fairly low power, uh, water would dissociate into hydrogen and oxygen gas, and that the amount of, of energy that you needed to put in that system was fairly low so that you could actually have a over unity effect in the sense that uh, you might need for example one man who recreated this system when he was at General Motors um, in, in a classified project a gentleman that we've met with who worked on the electric vehicle that got uh, shelved uh, told us that they were able to run a Honda generator 4000 watt Honda generator using only 200 watts of input power and that was enough at the correct voltages and, and frequencies to dissociate the water into hydrogen and oxygen gas and run this generator uh, with a modified uh, injector system. So this is something which is a really significant breakthrough because you're talking about the ability to take uh, uh, water uh, and create a very clean fuel that doesn't pollute. And while many people say, well, we're having a shortage of water, there's really no shortage of water on the earth. It's just potable water. Mm -hmm. And if you take into the fact that uh, we have been told that they have done this with dirty Mississippi River water, they've done it with seawater and salt water, it's a matter of changing and adjusting the frequencies and the voltage according to the dissolved uh, salts or minerals that might be in water, that you have an enormous abundance of uh, fuel uh, that is available that would not pollute. And this is, this is the sort of breakthrough that we're looking at uh, as a transition technology. Um, you know, obviously we are also working, if you look at the website, uh, the orionproject.org, you'll see that we're working on uh, over unity electromagnetic generators that deal with so-called zero point energy uh, that's in the uh, space around us. But we've already got a billion or so uh, internal combustion motor vehicles on the road, and those are going to be around for a while because people don't just throw those away. And so there should be ways to clean those up, and this is going to be a major step forward in that regard. And I think that uh, this is exactly why we want to pursue this. Uh, I might also point out that the electronics involved in the Stan Meyer system would also in all likelihood apply to an electromagnetic generator because if you're dealing with this kind of effect using uh, some sort of a Tesla coils and uh, high voltage and high frequency electronics, you're going to get into an over unity effect on the electromagnetic side of it as well. So there are a lot of applications and a lot of uh, implications for this type of breakthrough and it really needs to be studied. And we're now going to have the actual original materials that Stan Meyer had and all of his notes, and we need to uh, put in place around it a uh, really well-qualified team of scientists and engineers and a properly equipped uh, lab and facility. And this is going to take, you know, uh, a significant amount of funding beyond the 120000 that the actual acquisition is going to cost. So. We're making a plea today for people to, to support that generously uh, through their contributions to the orionproject.org. Well, one, the one thing to add on that uh, request uh, is that we already have a, a number of engineers who have contacted us who have interest in this sort of technology and are, are interested in helping us. But uh, there's always somebody out there we haven't heard of. Uh, and as I as I suggested, if you know of people who've worked with his technology, uh, having them contact us if they're interested in sharing their knowledge or sharing a bit of information would certainly help us. And also, if you know or some an engineer who has worked with it and might be interested in working with us and uh, taking this the next step uh, forward, uh, have them contact, uh, again, the Orion Project, and we'll put you in contact with the right people within the project to uh, to talk to. 
Yeah, and the other the other important thing to realize about this uh, mm. particular uh, historic breakthrough of the, for the Orion Project is that uh, because of our strategic team um, and the contacts that we have, uh, once we have a proof of principal system up and running again, we will be able to get this in front of uh, a lot of important leaders around the world and get them educated on the potential for this technology so that it can then be supported in a much larger way through a society. And I think that this is why we need the seed funding so we can get this equipment uh, up and running again. And, and it's quite a big process. I mean, the, the seed funds we need for this are, are to not only to be able to s safely store all this equipment and, and material, but then to catalog it. What we intend to do is to scan all of the documentation uh, in, into and digitize it so that it is in safe, secure, uh, multiple locations. And then also then to study all of his original papers and notebooks uh, and compare them with what's in the public domain in terms of patents and see where uh, the actual frequencies uh, are uh, for the electronics and what the schematics are that were not disclosed publicly in the patents that Stan Meyer did. And this is a significant and time-consuming research project that we'll have to undertake by people who are skilled at reading such technical information. And then in addition to that, we're then going to have to get all this equipment it's obviously been lying around for 12 years, uh, functional again, which is a significant engineering and technical task uh, in a setting that is properly equipped and also for safety because you're dealing with an explosive hydrogen and oxygen gas, and this has, can't be done in you know, the basement of someone's house, obviously. So you know, all of this has to be done, and it can be done in a few months, but it can only be done if we have adequate support uh, financially uh, to uh, get all of these elements put in place and do it as quickly as possible. We certainly don't want to just see this uh, material uh, sitting in storage for year after year like it has for the last dozen years. We want to do this very quickly, and to do that, we're going to need your help and your support. So I really do appreciate w what you can do uh, in terms of networking this to the right folks and helping us with this uh, really important undertaking which can uh, make such a huge difference to the energy situation and to the uh, world's environment and also to the current economic crisis because one of the things that the family that inherited all of this is asking uh, is that the, the eventual manufacturing of the equipment that would come out of this study uh, be done in the United States to replace the collapsing manufacturing sector that we have here. Um, and uh, uh, as sort of a new high-tech, green-collar, as they say, jobs uh, 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 renewal program. And uh, this is a very important concept is that, you know, as we have this big economic collapse occurring all around us, that we have to find uh, new technologies that can create new industries that will uh, not only save the economy but also save the environment uh, at the same time, and this is precisely what needs to happen uh, as the old so-called Rust Belt um, uh, fossil fuel and automotive industries collapse, uh, we need to have something to put in its place uh, so that our economy can again become robust and people can have abundant and productive lives, but doing things that are not going to harm the environment, but actually replace the old infrastructure of our civilization with this new energy infrastructure uh, that can create so much abundance while at the same time not harming the environment. Absolutely, and uh, we certainly, one of the things that the Orion Project wants to do is try to, and will do, is try to integrate a number of these issues uh, so that it becomes a win-win uh, for everybody concerned. Well, I, I think the other thing to realize is that Eventually, once we can demonstrate that a motor, for example, can run on such a system that, uh, or perhaps, and this has to be looked into, can be retrofitted, that this is something that uh, would not only create a lot of manufacturing jobs, because you're going to have to create these new motors, or if they're a kit that retrofits an old motor, 
the kits will have, but then you're going to have to install them uh, if it's a kit that you're retrofitting on an existing car or generator or gen set or what have you. And so for that reason, uh, what you find is that uh, there's an enormous amount of potential to benefit the environment and the economy at the same time with this breakthrough. And that, of course, is what Stan Meyer wanted, and he, he died suddenly and tragically before he could see his dream fulfilled. And what I think we need to do now is that uh, the world is in wide agreement that there's a huge problem with global warming, uh, there's a huge problem with the uh, old industries collapsing and not meeting the needs. The automotive industries, of course, are collapsing in the United States. And these are this is a breakthrough which could renew uh, all of those a- areas of our economy at the same time improving the environment uh, because, uh, you know, when you burn hydrogen and oxygen uh, from water, uh, basically, uh, as I mentioned, your only emission is water vapor, which wouldn't even have to go back into the environment. You could ideally put it through a condenser uh, coil and return the water back to the tank uh, to be reburned. Of course, it wouldn't be as much as it went in because a lot of it was converted to energy. But nevertheless, uh, this is uh, just a matter of conventional engineering. Where the real breakthrough is is in these electronic circuits, and that's what we have to have people to study and to figure out how exactly that he was doing that And for that, you have to have a rather sophisticated laboratory and uh, oscilloscopes and analyzers and what have you. I won't bore you with all the technical stuff, but um, it's something that isn't going to be done uh, in in a week or two with a couple of thousand dollars. You're going to need several hundred thousand dollars to maybe a million dollars. We're still working on the budget for this. But I think that we're going to have to uh, support this. And... Uh, we estimate that within the next 30 days or less, we will have all of this equipment here in the Charlottesville, Virginia area. And then the question is, then what? It was going to be up to all of us who know about this to raise the funds to uh, set up a laboratory and hire the correct, well-educated, knowledgeable electronics people and, and equip them properly in this laboratory. And so that's what we need your help with, and we need it immediately so that we can, as soon as we take possession of this equipment uh, and his documentation, we'll be able to, to, to begin the study of it. So please help us uh, with this and, and, and contribute generously to the Orionproject.org. Again, that's www.theorionproject.org. I might add that uh, I, I visited in, uh, the people who had the technology, the materiel, if you will, uh, last January. We wrote uh, an article or several articles on the Orion Project website, uh, the orionproject.org, as uh, many of you have seen over the, over the last year or so. Uh, we saw some initial tests on it, but uh, we were very frustrated in terms that it has taken from essentially January uh, middle of middle end of January until almost the uh, middle of December, in order for us to uh, obtain the materials and negotiate with the people who have it. It's been a long drawn out process. People have uh, asked us uh, over and over, "Well, what's happening? Why aren't you there yet?" And uh, and uh, these these things just take time. But we finally, uh, other people who were <clears throat> bidding on it decided to uh, drop out or did not have the proper qualifications, and the Orion Project has been uh, successful at this point, and, and literally it's a matter of days to a week or so, or days to just a couple weeks to uh, negotiate the final details on the agreement. And uh, uh, to that end, we're just incredibly excited about this opportunity because it's an opportunity not only for us, but essentially for the world uh, to get some of this technology out. There are there are numerous uh, people around the United States and around the world, actually, who have been working on this technology uh, of various types, various sorts over the over the years, but uh, Stan Meyer's uh, technology has really been the uh, the gold standard by which people have always tried to obtain or uh, to get to where he was. And but without access to his materials, uh, it's been impossible for people to really get to where Stan Meyer uh, was was working. So this is uh, this is a breakthrough. This, this is a major breakthrough, and uh, we're incredibly excited about it. Uh, I think the other the other exciting thing about this is that uh, the, there are a lot of people who uh, have.
have had this type of breakthrough before, but that their uh, information has ended up being, quote, black shell taken into a project to be uh, uh, not released to the public. The strength of the Orion Project and what the work we've done in the past with the disclosureproject.org is that we know how to get information out to the public and also in front of a lot of key leaders uh, in the world, and that once we have this, uh, uh, any of these uh, devices up and running uh, and proving that you can create a, a large quantity of uh, energy from the uh, high water into the hydrogen and oxygen, and our goal is to actually close the loop on that, meaning that if you, for example, have a generator running uh, off of one of his uh, uh, electrolyzer systems that's uh, breaking down hydrogen and oxygen into water to take uh, some of that uh, output power that the generator is, is creating from, from being run on the Browns gas and put it back into the system so you basically close the loop so that you have a system only running on water with no input power from the grid or from any other source. This a kind of breakthrough would be something that would revolutionize thinking uh, around the world when it comes to energy solutions, the energy crisis, the environmental crisis, and, and, and we'd have the ability to get this in front of key people uh, in society and uh, in the media and also in the political establishment uh, who, frankly, do not know about these things. And if they're asked about it, are routinely told it doesn't exist. So what we have to do is provide that information to the people who are looking for these solutions so that these new energy solutions are properly supported and, and are leveraged quickly out to the public. Our goal is to get this information out as soon as possible. And we have a network of just extraordinary people. I mean, I was recently uh, in uh, Hollywood meeting with a major filmmaker and a producer and director, and, uh, and there, this is all being followed by a lot of folks who are very interested in this and who have a wide uh, array of contacts. We have similar contacts in the governments in Europe and in the United States government uh, with the new administration that's coming in and also in, in Congress. And so what we need to be able to do is put the data and put a proof of principle system that's actually operating in front of them. And I think that with that could happen relatively quickly uh, with this equipment that we're getting from the Stan Meyer uh, uh, collection uh, that we're, we're going to be uh, taking possession of, I think, in the next few weeks, uh, I hope within the next two or three weeks. And so what, what we'll see then is the ability to really change the dialogue uh, in society about energy solutions away from, uh, say, quote, clean coal, where we're still, you know, one of the euphemisms that's out there, and of course this was talked about by both presidential campaigns, is clean coal, where they're still talking about uh, spending something upwards of $30 billion in taxpayer money to study how to burn coal and sequester the carbon. But what they're not talking about is that the coal, for example, coming from West Virginia and Kentucky, most of it now is coming from what's called MTR, Mountain top removal, where they literally are blowing up, and you should look at the Sierra Club report on this that came out recently. They're blowing up the entire mountain tops of of these this whole area of the United States, of beautiful forests and streams, so that they can then have these huge shovels just excavate coal, and it is causing so much pollution, not only of the air and water, but the complete destruction of the mountains in the Blue Ridge and Appalachian chain. And this is how we're getting the coal. So even if you burn it cleanly, which is an open question, and you spend the tens of billions of dollars to get there, to get the coal out of the ground is an environmental holocaust. It's a catastrophe. And, and so, you know, while all that money is going into that kind of, frankly, nonsensical, non-solutions, pseudo-solutions to the energy and environmental crisis, um, there's really no attention being paid to these really huge breakthroughs in physics and science that people like Stan Meyer had stumbled across. As I mentioned, his was a, a, almost an accidental finding because he was working in a radar uh, facility where at certain frequencies and voltages he observed water 
uh, dissociating into hydrogen and oxygen at very low amounts of power. And so this is the kind of thing that has to be supported by our society. Uh, and the only way that's going to happen is to get these systems up and running and putting them in front of the media, in front of the public, and in front of the policymakers. So we say, hey, look, you know, this is the kind of solution that we need that would be very, very fast and would uh, be applicable to many settings and which would uh, clean up the environment, create jobs, and uh, give us a source of energy that's non-polluting. This is just one of many of these technologies. I think uh, some people have said that some of these technologies belong in the weird science desk, uh, but there are others that uh, we are working on as well uh, besides the Sandmeyer technology, And uh, but they're still... Uh, we're still working with several different teams. Uh, some of the stuff has been mentioned on uh, the Orion project in the past, but we're working with several other teams with other types of technology, but uh, they aren't at a point where we can talk about it in any kind of detail yet. Uh, did you want to make any comments about that, uh, Dr. Greer? Well, yes, I think that one of the things that people, we are in the process of investigating. You know, there are two different teams that have electromagnetic generator systems, um, and some initial tests that we have done with one of them was that it was around uh, between four and six times more energy coming out of it than going in. This was a purely, uh, this was not a water system. It was purely an electrical, um, an electromagnetic system. And there is another team that we're working with uh, in another country that is in the final processes of testing a uh, 20 kilowatt generator that uh, on their initial tests have shown that the input battery power going into it has stayed completely. Uh, the battery actually had a better charge at the end of a multi-kilowatt run for four hours than it did at the end of it, I mean, at the beginning of it, and that uh, it apparently is running on a, quote, over-unity basis, uh, accessing the uh, so-called quantum vacuum flux field in the electromagnetic field. Um, so we have a couple of teams of people uh, actually, uh, and, and there's a third one as well that's working with a university. And so we are in the process of, uh, of investigating those uh, as, uh, at the same time that this major breakthrough has happened with the orionproject.org getting the um, uh, Stan Meyer uh, uh, equipment awarded to it. Uh, so uh, we've been very busy, to say the least. I mean, I've been living on jets, going back and forth all over the place on, uh, in the last month, and, and and there's a lot happening, and we really need the support from the public and from also major donors, if there are people out there listening who know of folks who could be uh, major uh, sources of funding for this type of research. Uh, it is urgently needed, uh, and... Uh, they should go to the orionproject.org and let us know how they can help us and how we can work together in a partnership to get this technology out to the public, start a new energy environmentally friendly economy, and uh, support the kind of scientists that we're working with who uh, have been working for many years. Uh, one scientist, for example, has been working for 18 years on a system uh, that um, – uh, we went out and had, we actually had a Ph.D. engineer, uh, a guy who was trained at Stanford, uh, test this system. And the preliminary tests on it are quite remarkable because uh, under every kind of measurement we could do, there was uh, between four and six times more uh, uh, wattage and power coming out of the system than had to go in to run it. So obviously at that level you can close the loop, as I mentioned before, have the system run itself and also run a load. And so uh, we are wanting to support and, and are in the process of supporting uh, researchers who are doing this kind of breakthrough, out-of-the-box thinking. And uh, it, uh, this, this is the kind of research that we need to do. And we need to be talking about supporting this uh, with not a, a few thousand dollars, but with several million dollars in funding. And so this is what we're really asking the public to find for us within the uh, – public because, uh, you know, we put so much funding into things uh, as a people uh, that really have not gone anywhere, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, hot fusion reactors through the Department of Energy or the Missile Defense Shield or uh, clean coal or you name it, uh, biofuels, which are, as I mentioned, to really create more environmental problems than, than they solve. 
um, in, in taking the, 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 the overall picture. And even electric cars, you know, it's interesting, a study just came out that the electric car, if you are running it on a uh, grid, plugging it into your home or business that's being supplied by a coal-fired uh, power plant, it actually creates more pollution than a hybrid. And this is not known by a lot of people. A lot of people. I haven't seen that. That's very interesting, actually. And this is a study that just came out. And this is, and what that means is, and this is very important for people to understand, is that that's another bill of goods being sold to the public. Where, oh well, you know, great, we'll have an electric car. Let's plug it in. Well, where is the juice coming from that's going to charge all those huge battery packs? in the new General Motors electric car, the Volt. It's going to be coming in over 50% of, of, of the power in the United States comes from cold-fired power plants, which are enormously polluting, very dirty, and very destructive to the environment. So it isn't as if that energy is coming from someplace clean. It's not coming from hydroelectric power or something. It's coming from coal. And so when you factor that into the equation, you're better off buying a Prius or buying a, a, a hybrid car that uses some gasoline and what have you uh, because uh, the electricity, when you're taking all of your power needs for an electric car from the coal-fired grid, and again, it's over half of, the, of all of us get our electricity from coal in the United States, uh, then you're actually creating a, a worse environmental problem than if you just bought a, a regular hybrid car. So I think that this is why we need to change the dialogue and do real science on this issue of the environment so that we solve this problem with real solutions and not what I call pseudo-solutions, all the false solutions that are being proffered out there that are being pushed by special agendas, big oil, big coal, the big auto manufacturers, and what have you, because these are non-solutions uh, which are being uh, falsely presented to the public as real solutions, and we need real solutions. Uh, so true, and I guess one of the other things that mentioned along the way as we're discussing this is that uh, there's a, a lot of the uh, people who don't want these things to happen uh, don't even think about the fact that it, it, the transition to using where we are today to using some of these technologies in a significantly impactable manner. In other words, say 30 to 50 percent of the country using these technologies, so there's actually a significant reduction in our fossil fuel usage and our money going overseas, et cetera. Uh, that's going to take a while. That's going to take years to integrate these new technologies into our present situation. And so it's not, uh, it's not a uh, overnight as I've often said on these uh, on the World Puja Network in the past, uh, it's not an overnight uh, change that will occur. However, it will be an overnight change in people's attitude and views on the possible versus the impossible. And uh, knowing that some of these things is possible, are possible, is going to make a huge difference in the way people approach uh, life. Uh, politics will change, et cetera, et cetera. So. Uh, this is non-trivial in terms of the potential, but we have to do this. We have and to do I something different than where the, we're going. Let's just talk about the, the, you know, how quickly this could happen if uh, we get a major breakthrough with this Stanmeyer equipment. One of the one of the things that we're going to be looking at is can there be a kit that would retrofit an existing car engine? Let's say you have a, um, you know, a, a Ford Explorer or something. And you know you're spending, uh, you know you drive 15,000 miles a year, so you're, 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 you've got about a thousand gallons or more a year that you're using in fuel. That's costing you around uh, two to four thousand dollars a year in fuel costs, spent on the price of, of the gasoline. Well, if there was a, an ability to take that engine and do a conversion of it so that you could run it on water with some additives so that it wouldn't freeze in the winter and have one of these systems on it where the emissions would be water vapor, if anything at all, um, this would be a huge breakthrough. Now, I will say that in the last year, I have visited a facility that was in uh, Oklahoma where some scientists had done exactly that, but they didn't want to bring it out because they were afraid, quite frankly, that some of the special interests would actually harm them, that they would be assassinated or what have you. 
and people kind of laugh when they hear that sometimes, but it's actually not funny to the people who have had folks show up and threaten them. Uh, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, well, the, the, the sort of the spooky end of suppression. But these scientists actually had uh, their first breakthrough was that they had a car retrofitted that was running completely on water, and I asked them, well, this is what we're looking for. And they said, no, we do not want that because we're, we're afraid that we can't do that. And this is one of the reasons why we think it's so important to have the public involved early because those kinds of clumsy attempts at suppressing this are going to be very hard to do if there are millions of people who are aware of a breakthrough like this. But imagine if, if uh, we were able to get the Stan Meyer equipment up to the point where there was such an ability. Well, then if there was a mandate that the existing cars on the road be converted to this system, uh, you could have uh, that transition happen pretty quickly. It would not only be an, a, a fantastic uh, economic boost because of the jobs it would create, but you would suddenly have the ability to convert existing cars uh, that are on the road to a clean source of fuel, uh, even if it was a mixture of half and half. So I think that this is the kind of research we need to do. Um, there's a lot of evidence that this has been done in the past and it can be done, um, but the likelihood that the special interests are going to let the United States government create this breakthrough is uh, not good. I mean, I would not I think we're all going to be very sad if we sit around and wait for the bureaucracy in Washington to do this for us or for the big auto companies to do this for us. Uh, all the evidence ex uh, that exists suggests that, in fact, they would do everything in their power to uh, delay such a breakthrough, uh, if not uh, viciously uh, attempt to suppress it. And for that reason, we need to be responsible for it and uh, be the group that is the leadership group that leverages this out to the public and in front of uh, our leaders and policymakers and say, now this is exactly how we need to do, but we have to be able to prove it. We have to actually be able to uh, have a generator running that is uh, running on this fuel or a car that is running on this fuel. And uh, by the way, uh, what I have to emphasize here, this uh, the, the hydrogen and oxygen coming from this system is not stored in a tank under pressure. It is actually used on demand. So the risk of explosion is actually less than that for uh, gasoline because it's not building up into a tank where it could then explode. A lot of people who've talked about hydrogen-powered cars have worried about a high-speed auto accident with that hydrogen tank exploding like the Hindenburg. These systems create the hydrogen-oxygen mixture on demand, and so it's burned on demand. Uh, and so there's no storage like you have in your gas tank. And as an emergency doctor, I will tell you that some of the worst accidents I've ever seen have been uh, car wrecks and truck wrecks where those gas tanks have exploded and, and enveloped the car in, in, of course, a fireball, just like a jet. When it crashes, uh, most of the deaths are related to that fireball. So this is a, a real actually safety advantage because you're not storing the explosive internal combustion engine's gas source it's actually being created from water, which is, of course, non-flammable, into hydrogen and oxygen and used on demand. So there's very little of it at any given time that would store up. So this is a very important part as well in terms of safety. Uh, and then you look at the supply line. Look at the amount of damage that is done to the environment from oil drilling, uh, oil tankers that leak, uh, ones that go aground, ones that hit rocks and split open, et cetera, and so on. There was recently one in the San Francisco Bay area uh, where a tanker hit one of the uh, Bay Bridge uh, support structures and, and, and really damaged the bay there. Um, this, you're talking about water. So if you spill water, you spilt water. It's no big deal. And there's no storage and processing of this noxious petroleum stuff. So. Uh, there are so many areas where that when you analyze it where this would be uh, an astonishing step forward uh, even for the existing old internal combustion engines that are in cars but also that are in factories uh, that are in electric generation facilities. Uh, for example, I have a friend who's from a very prominent family in Jamaica and, and he has informed me that about uh, $2 billion a year now is being spent in Jamaica for oil burners that are burning oil for their electricity. Uh, that's all, they don't have any other source of fuel, but they're surrounded by water. So this sort of thing could be something that would be an enormous breakthrough and would also enable 
uh, the government of Jamaica to spend $2 billion a year on the benefit education and, and, and health of their people rather than shipping it off to the big oil suppliers. So, you know, the implications of this are enormous, and this is why people need to understand how big of an issue this is and, and support uh, the orionproject.org. Uh, generously with your contributions, folks. We need it right now because we have this $120,000 obligation to uh, the family that inherited all of Stenmeyer's equipment, but then we also have this huge task ahead of us to set up a properly equipped laboratory and have the right personnel and scientists there working full-time on this. So uh, it's happening right now, and we need your help, and I hope you all can help us. Uh, Steve, I wanted to add a little technical comment here, if I may. Sure. Uh, there's been a, there are a number of uh, groups or uh, individuals or small corporations around the United States, <clears throat> probably in the dozens, at least I know of about a dozen anyway, probably a lot more that I don't know of, that are building uh, hydrogen booster systems or systems that produce a small amount of hydroxy gas or Brown's gas that is added to the fuel stream or the gasoline fuel stream uh, for the automobile or truck. Uh, this addition of Brown's gas, we'll call it, uh, does increase the fuel efficiency by anywhere between 5 and 25 percent or slightly more depending on who you believe and how you test it. Uh, this is uh, one of the problems with that technology. Now, it, it gets that increase in gas mileage by basically helping the fossil fuels, i.e. the gasoline, to burn more efficiently. Uh, Basically, internal combustion engines are rather inefficient in terms of their burning. A lot of the gas is not completely burned. It goes out the tailpipe, which is why right. one has That's right. a, a, a catalytic converter on the exhaust, which completes the, exhaust, which completes the burning process, basically just wasting heat. You know, if anybody's run into a catalytic converter that's been run for a while, they get pretty doggone hot. So what I'm what I'm getting at that technology exists, but it's really it just aiding and helping. Part of the problem with that approach on the technology is that it literally takes more energy to produce the hydroxy or Brown's gas in terms of electricity, in terms of electrolysis, than is produced by the gas uh, in the burning process. Right. It it gets its increased efficiency that. 5 to 20 percent or so by increasing the burning efficiency of the petroleum products or the gasoline. What we're talking about here and what Stan Meyer did was he figured out a way in which to break the water apartment apart, producing brown gas or hydroxy gas, which much less electricity than can be produced or much less energy than is produced in the burning process. So his process was a very in, in, very effective, efficient process of breaking apart the water molecules by basically shaking them apart using the right frequencies and electric pulses and what have you. Right. When that is done, then you can use some of the power produced by the engine to drive a generator to boost, produce the amount of electricity needed to break the water apartment and still be ahead of the game. And that example that uh, Dr. Greer gave of a of an engineer who had worked on the electric car process where you use a Honda generator with a few hundred watts producing uh, several thousand watts is an example of, of that highly efficient process. That is the goal and what we're aiming for. Yeah, and many people say, well, why doesn't that guy, or when he worked with General Motors, why don't those folks come out with this? And, and the answer is that he told us very directly that uh, – uh, it was made very clear to him that this is a, a type of technology they do not want to get out, that it would be a, quote, game changer uh, in the economy and with the oil uh, sector. And uh, let's face it, um, you know, there's about $300 trillion in oil and gas and coal that uh, a relative handful of countries and corporations and individuals own, and that uh, those interests um, don't want something like this to replace uh, oil. And uh, so I think that uh, it, 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 we have to understand that this is both a technical challenge and a strategic challenge. And the strategic end of it is probably been the biggest problem that many people over the past uh, 
decades have come up with these sort of breakthrough technologies. Uh, we have a, in fact, there's a member of Congress uh, that I have personally briefed on these issues, uh, who is chairman of a committee in the Congress, and and who told has a friend, a very close friend of his, that uh, used to work for the Department of Energy and, and was at a facility uh, associated with the Oak Ridge National Laboratories in Tennessee, and who uh, saw uh, literally dozens of such devices that had been quote, black-shelled and suppressed, and that this is not a conspiracy theory of any type, that this is what happens when you have a huge amounts of influence and power coming from uh, a relatively small number of people. And I think that uh, the only way to get around that is to not only have the public support the research rather than corporations and the government, but also to be able to have the public made aware of these breakthroughs very quickly that you squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube so forcefully and so quickly that you cannot put it back in. And this is why we would get this in front of not only uh, friendly people in the government, but also uh, celebrities, the public, the media, so that the public knows that this is, is a legitimate scientific breakthrough uh, and that it isn't going on uh, secretively in some corporate lab or in some government lab that then disappears into the black pit of Calcutta. And this is unfortunately been the fate of many of these technologies, and this can be proven. Uh, and so I think that this is why our strategy with uh, the orionproject.org is, 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 is a key part of what we're trying to do. And it, inv it involves you, the people listening to this, to understand that uh, you have to be part of the solution. And if you're not, you really are part of the problem because the public need to be educated. They need to support this financially, but then they need to also network this to their friends and families and coworkers and, and everyone in their, their, their email list. So go to the orionproject.org and help us uh, raise these funds for this research and to acquire this equipment that we have now been awarded. And I think that we're going to see some really major breakthroughs in 2009. It, it needs to be the year of new energy. It needs to be the, the year of solutions rather than just complaining about the problems. We need to come together as a people and find the solutions and share them with each other and not allow them to sort of disappear or wither on the vine, which is what's happened over and over again for so many years. Uh, we need to change that dynamic, and I think we're going to have some friendly uh, people in the new administration on this. I think we have some uh, – uh, the public is now aware of the environmental crisis and global warming. I think the public is aware of the energy crisis and our vulnerability as a society to our dependence on, on imported oil. And I think that most people understand that uh, the problems our society are facing uh, have to be uh, solved by all of us coming together uh, to support this both scientifically and also socially, that we as a people have to say, look, uh, it's time for this this kind of information, these types of technologies, to have uh, everyone's shoulder to the wheel to move forward and out to the world. Uh, I don't think a small group can do it, and this is why uh, Ted and I are doing this interview today, is to say, look, we have just been told we have been awarded this um, very important uh, legacy of Stan Meyer's equipment and, and notes, and that the public need to join with us to help us. And that uh, uh, if we get that assistance and we all pull together, I think we're going to see the world transformed in the coming 12 months. Once this, uh, once this arrangements are finalized and the uh, negotiations are complete on this we certainly will be posting this information on the Orion project and sending out our, in our newsletter if you don't have uh, if you're aware of the Orion project but uh, would like to receive a newsletter about what we're doing sort of breaking news uh, you can sign up for it on the Orion, the Orion project org website yeah there is a place for you to sign up and it's free and it's, it is the Orion project org and there's a place where you can sign up and get our newsletter, and um, we'll notify people as soon as we take possession of this equipment and as soon as it gets back here to the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia area, and we'll keep you updated on our progress um, and um, more frequently than uh, you'll be able to, to receive through uh, radio interviews like this. So um, I think that if you want to uh, do that, uh, that 
it, it will really help you kind of stay informed because this is a very fast-breaking uh, development, uh, this as well as these other technologies that we're in the process of investigating and supporting through the Orion Project. Um, I think our hour is up, and I would like to thank all of you for listening, and I particularly would like to thank the good folks at the World Puja Network for um, hosting us. And you've been listening to conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer, and I've been joined by uh, Dr. Ted Loader. And thank you, Ted. And uh, You're very welcome, Steve, as always. All right. And we will speak all with all of you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.